Hello and welcome back to Math 301 Combinatorics at CSU. Today we're going to be talking about Euler's formula for planar graphs. This is a formula that computes a quantity known as the Euler characteristic of a planar graph, which is defined in terms of the vertices, the edges, and the faces of a graph. So let's let G be a connected planar graph, so it can be embedded in the plane with no edges crossing. And V is the number of vertices of G, E is the number of edges, and F is the number of faces. These are the regions enclosed by the edges, including the outer regions. So let's first count the vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight vertices, so V is eight in this case. In this graph, the number of edges is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then this one out here makes 10. So there are 10, 10 edges on G. And how many faces are there? Faces, again, are regions enclosed by the edges um, as if this was a map drawn in plane. And so we can label them, uh, we can number them one through four here, one, two, three, and four. This outer region also counts as a region. So it's like the, the piece of paper outside of the graph. So there are four faces um, and the Euler characteristic is defined to be V minus E plus F. And this is a quantity you can also talk about when the graph is not embedded in the plane, but embedded on a torus as Dr. Priest talked about in her videos this week um, or some other geometric shape. But in the, plane, in the case that it's embedded on the plane, we'll see that it's always two, this quantity, the Euler characteristic. So it was two for that graph, but let's see some other examples of graphs in which we can compute the Euler characteristic and see directly that it is two. In particular, let's consider trees. So trees, again, are connected graphs that, are not that don't have any cycles, so they're certainly planar. And a tree with n vertices we know has n minus one edges. So if v is n and e is n minus one. How many faces are there? Well, again, there's no cycles, so there's just the one region outside of the graph. So f is one. And so v minus e plus f, that Euler characteristic, is n minus n minus one plus one, and that just simplifies to two. So yes, every tree has Euler characteristic two, and Euler's formula says that that's true for any planar graph. So if a graph doesn't have Euler characteristic two, in, you know, if, if you can't embed it in a way that has Euler characteristic two, then it's not planar. And so we can use this method to show that K5 is not planar by proof by contradiction. So um, K5, again, is the complete graph on five vertices. It has five vertices and 10 edges, because that's five choose two possible edges. And if it's planar, assume for the contrary that it's planar for the moment, then by Euler's formula, the number of faces is two minus V plus E, just solving for F. And plugging in 10 and five for this equation, we get that F is seven. So if we had a way of embedding K5 in the graph with no, in the plane with no edges crossing, then it has seven faces. Now let's think about why that's not possible. Well, every edge is in exactly two faces. In, a, in any planar graph, any edge that you draw, even if it's bordering the, say, the outer border, it's adjacent to two faces, this triangle and the outer region. Any other edge is adjacent to two faces. And so you can count the number of pairs of a face and an edge on that face. The number of those face edge adjacent pairs is 20 because there's 10 edges and each one has two faces that you can assign to it. So 10 times two is 20. But if we count it a different way, every face has at least three edges that are attached to it because this graph has no double edges or loops. And so the minimal possible face is a triangle, the smallest number of edges. So there's at least seven times three of these face edge adjacent pairs, and that's 21. And we, we said that there's only 20, but there's at least 21, and that's a contradiction because 20 is less than 21. So this shows that K5 can't be embedded in the, in the plane by a proof by contradiction using Euler's formula. So let's prove Euler's formula. Let's see why it's true by induction on the number of faces. So again, Euler's formula says in any planar graph, V minus E plus F equals two. And we start with the base case of F equals one. So that's the smallest number of faces because there has to be an outer region of your um, graph. So there's, there's at least one face. And in that case, then it's a, it's a connected graph with just one outer region as the only face. That means it's a tree because having no faces for a planar graph is equivalent to having no cycles. We showed above that trees have Euler characteristic too. And so we're, we're done with that base case.
Now for the induction step, let f be at least two, be, let that be an arbitrary integer and assume that the, that the claim is true for all planar graphs with f minus one faces. Now let's show that it's true for all planar graphs with f faces. So let's pick a connected planar graph G, let that be any connected planar graph with F faces. Now F is at least two, which means it's not a tree. You have some cycle um, that encloses some region that's not the outer region. So there exists a cycle on G and we can pick some edge that's on some cycle, pick some edge X. Now consider what happens when we remove this edge. The number of edges goes down by one and also the number of faces goes down by one because these two faces actually merge to form one big face, decreasing the total number of faces by one. So if G prime is this graph obtained by removing X, it has V vertices, E minus one edges and F minus one faces if V, E and F are the number of vertices, edges and faces in G in our original graph. Then this one has quantities V, E minus one and F minus one. Now the induction hypothesis said that we can assume that, it, that we're assuming that it works for any graph with f minus one faces, which d prime has. So that means we can plug those numbers in and we get v minus e minus one plus f minus one equals two. But um, simplifying that we get exactly the equation we wanted, v minus e plus f equals two because these ones cancel. So Euler's formula holds for g as well because these are the quantities for g. And that completes the proof by induction because we use the fact that it was true for G prime to show that it was true for G. So now you try, prove that the graph B33 is not planar. So B33 is a complete bar type bipartite graph with three vertices in the left set and three vertices in the right set and all possible edges between them. And this proof will go a little bit like the one we just did for K5, except you need a little bit of a stronger fact. So the hint is that in a bipartite graph, any face, if it's, if it's a planar embedding, has to have at least four edges because you can't have three cycles in a bipartite graph. If you tried to make a three cycle, you'd end up with one of the edges in um, one of the sides of the bipartite graph and that's not allowed. And so faces, don't just have at least three edges around them. In this case, they have at least four edges around them. And that's gonna be helpful in proving that B33 is not planar to get those numbers to work out with a proof by contradiction. So that's all we have for today and we'll see you next time.